I'm Heather Booth. <laughs> and I'm Marge Tavankin. For those who were here last night, wasn't it an inspiring beginning? We welcome you to this conference on lessons of Vietnam. It was a history changing time. Three million people were killed in Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos during the war. Here in America, over 170,000 conscientious objectors, 3,200 draft resistors were imprisoned, and over a half a million draft offenders, including those who never registered for the draft, that was the time. There were those who were maimed or injured from Agent Orange and other herbicides and defoliants. Most of the casualties were African Americans and Latinos, especially in the first three years. There are those, and there are those who still have the psychological scars that were created. And all of us, the country was shortchanged by Washington that tried to convince us we could have both guns and butter. You are the heroines and heroes of that time, and many carry on the struggle into these times, and we need to, whether it's in conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq or Ferguson and Baltimore. That time also changed us. Uh, changed me. <laughs> Before the war, more than three quarters of the American population believed in their government and that their government was in their interest and telling them the truth. Now, less than one-third believe that. During the war, so many major leaders and institutions lied to us as atrocities occurred on their watch. Our government, universities, press, and the councils of wise men. So this conference was created in response to the Department of Defense decision and a congressional appropriation to spend millions of dollars in the next 10 years distributing educational material to schools, hosting public forums throughout the country, and creating a website at the DOD, at the DOD about the war that we learned was neither accurate and certainly not complete. Veterans deserve to be recognized, and there are many veterans in this group, but honor comes with truth. Those who protested the war, both in the military and throughout communities across the nation, also need to be recognized. Our service must be remembered and the lessons from that war passed on. We can't assume others will tell the story. We hope this conference becomes an amazing gathering, and we hope that all of us together going forward will find ways during the next 10 years to acknowledge the anniversaries of these events, because as Heather said, we must claim our legacy. So if you're still in town on Sunday morning, one of our planning committee members, John McAuliffe, John, raise your hand, <laughs> will be coordinating an impromptu get together of people wanting to take this to the next step. There's information in your program book, I think it's on the back page, telling you where to go. It's George Washington University, rather. It's right around uh, Foggy Bottom. And we have coffee and a whole room where people can have a group discussion. Today is a time to savor. It's a beginning, not an end. So take your time with each other. Please get to know each other. Welcome those you don't know and reconnect with those you do. In trying to figure out how to explain this conference, we had to come to the terms of, yes, it is part reunion, but it's also the part okay. sharing of memories and an important history. And most of all, sharing the lessons and the passing on of those lessons to the young people who carry on the struggles today. We have a wall of remembrance for those who died and who made their transition. Monsignor East asked us to say, Presente, please sign your names of the people who you remember 
on those walls. Visit it and add the names. So, as we all know, many views were shared in those years. <laughs> It was an extraordinary, but also very messy, messy time, but an incredible movement was formed, and we wanted that full feeling to be reflected in the next day. As Abby Hoffman said, we were young, we were reckless, arrogant, silly, headstrong, and we were right. I can't tell you how many times I said, don't trust anybody over 30. I'm, I was wrong. <laughs> but what we weren't wrong about was we came together to help end a war, to awaken the conscience of a country, and to change the consciousness of a generation and those generations coming after. There were people and veterans who resisted the draft, went to jail, left the country, or risked their jobs and livelihoods. Some of us worked from the inside, some from the outside. We had some passionate differences, and these will be reflected in the conference, yet our differences we've learned over time can make us stronger. We've also learned that all of our struggles are connected, whether it's about foreign wars or the fight for 15 and a union, or the environment and women's and civil rights. And we know that black lives matter. All our struggles are connected. This is going to be a very packly and packed agenda and very tightly programmed. People have already been complaining to me. <laughs> <laughs> but we're asking everybody to tr please try when you're, uh, we have a, we've built in a lot of Q&A time from the floor. But please try to limit your comments to one minute or your questions to one minute. I know people have a lot to say, but the only way we'll get to have a lot of people be able to participate is if we really try to be mindful of that. We know some of you have waited 50 years to make your comments. <laughs> oh, I forgot this. this was an overwhelmingly volunteer effort, but we shared a deep commitment to make this a positive experience. We want to acknowledge our fellow family uh, planning committee members in the U.S. and in Vietnam. Ira Arluck, Sally Benson, Julian Bond, David Courtright, Susan Hammond, Tom Hayden, John McAuliffe, Sophie Quinn Judge, Paul Ryder, and Chuck Searcy. And thanks to our extraordinary staff, Alan Charney, Terry Province, Barbara Helmick, John Hutto, Chris Cordelizzi, Chris Smith, Louise Weisman, and a core of volunteers. We're so grateful also to Peggy Cusack and her team at Rendezvous Events and the staff at Fenton Communications for their support. I just want to underline when Heather says, almost all volunteers, she is not exaggerating. <laughs> Um, the other thing I just wanted to add was each of us alone, if we had had our own way, would have probably done things a little differently. We would have had a conference the way we would have a dinner party in our own house. However, there were 15 of us sitting around the table and we had to make compromises with each other and we think the program actually, interestingly enough, is better and stronger and yeah, maybe we did learn something in 50 years. Yeah, I know. I personally, and on behalf of Heather and our entire team, want to thank the co-sponsoring organizations who helped us get word about this out. They are the Campaign for America's Future, Credo Action, the Institute for Policy Studies, Move On, Peace Action, U.S. Labor Against the War, Veterans for Peace, and Win Without War. We also want to thank, and this is important, all the people who gave generous contributions to support this effort, because this conference would not have been able to be held without them. And also, right now in the real time, 
Busboys and Poets is all over DC. I've learned about it since I've been visiting. They provided all of our coffee and tea. Thank you. We also want to thank Dick Flax, who made the wonderful music compilation that we'll hear in between sessions. And I want to thank him personally for having been my professor and played an important role in many of our lives. We certainly want to thank Susan Cohen and Kitty Hendricks for the videos, artwork, and announcing they do throughout, including the voice of God. <laughs> Will all those we've recognized, all those who helped to create this, including those on the program, please stand up. We Come thank on. you. We have another special treat that we have going on throughout the day and evening, and it's the um, Activist Archive Video Project. I have now done it, so I know what I'm speaking about, where Julie uh, Thompson and Brogan Dupuere are downstairs in the Dockery Room, and you can go in and be videoed, tell your story, they'll ask you questions, and you're gonna get it may take a few days, but you will get your own copy of that interview and it will go online with a lot of other activist archive uh, uh, s s people who've done it. Uh, they started in LA, they're taking it national and they were agreed to come here and let us, what a place to be one-stop shopping for anti-war memories. Okay. So 1.30? Oh, great. Okay. So I just want to say, unfortunately, we still have some bills to pay. Um, we got very close. People really, really helped. Uh, but we're really asking you, if you can, whether it's $10, $20, $100, or if anybody can do it, $1,000, to make contributions. There'll be volunteers during the programs as you leave taking baskets. We're in a church, so we have baskets. And uh, please try to make an extra contribution. We really need to pay our bills, and we, uh, we're not that far away. We only, we only have about $15,000 to find, and then we'll be totally clean. For those who tweet, <laughs> this may be a generational That's issue. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but the sample tweets are up there, and we'd like you to tweet during the uh, speakers uh, so others can learn about it. And it's hashtag Lessons of Vietnam. But most of all, we want to thank all of you for doing what you did in the past. Thank you for continuing to do what's needed in the face of new threats and wars to come. Heather, you tweet. <laughs> I don't know how to tweet. Heather tweets. Thank you for coming. It's your participation that will make our time together a rich one. This is a beginning. Uh, remember, it's the beginning of this 10-year period, not an ending to the remembering, to the reuniting of all of us, and to passing on the lessons to those wonderful young people we saw last night. Thank you all. Thank you.